Welcome back to Parks of Some Parsimony. Today I want to give you a tour of my gardens. It's June 2nd. We're in upstate New York, so we're in a Zone 5 garden. And I like to do these every year. If you'd like to check out my other past year videos, I'll go ahead and put links for those playlists down in the description. But this is what our garden looks like right now, June 2nd, 2022. This is known as our home garden because it's closest to the house. And this year we rotated our tomatoes into the four center plots. I also have rotated our peppers. So we have peppers here. I moved my fountain closer to the walkway here and I'm doing a combination of onions. These are white onions and then I have red onions, two rows of red onions mixed with my strawberries. My strawberries, I have not had any success growing. So I'm hoping by moving them to a new location maybe they'll do better and then of course we have jalapeno peppers and then bell peppers and this has been the star of this garden so far i've been following charles doubting on youtube here links down in the description and using that method for lettuce and it's amazing absolutely amazing i just harvested this side last night and you can see i've already harvested this side twice twice and it is still producing really really well my broccoli i missed on getting it in the ground fast enough so it already started to go to head you can see that here and then i did eat some of it but i'm letting this go to flower my plan is to allow it to get pollinated and then i'm going to let it go to seed and collect those seeds for next year so i'll have broccoli for next year but not all of the broccoli has started to head up so i've got a small head there and a small head but these guys are fine so it works out that i'm just spacing the broccoli is going to be spaced out for me which will work fine for us you'll also see that i have a lot of this dill here and that is also excellent companion plants for the broccolis and the lettuce so i'm just leaving this in here to just help with variety and companion planting and hopefully pest control we ended up moving our blueberry bushes here to the end of the garden they did not do that awfully but they didn't do that great either so this one did have flowers and you can see baby blueberries here however this plant has almost completely died except for down here so no blueberries off of this plant this year i need to finish tidying up around the base here but we're hoping that they'll do better here because there's more sun and over here by the chickens hello girls i have my herb garden so we just went ahead and planted some oregano sage and thyme and back here we have some zinnias again attracting pollinators to the area something new to my garden i have added the ole raised bed and we're giving it a try this year we filled this up with our own homemade compost so i'm not sure what to actually expect but i have really tiny lettuce plant here this one actually almost didn't survive but it seems to be doing pretty well now that i transplanted it this is a beautiful uh, variety of lettuce that i absolutely am loving i'll show you a bigger version of this in the other garden and then i have one banana pepper here and then a baby eggplant these guys are my babies they weren't doing that well so having them here keeps them out of the critters and hopefully they'll grow really well I also put in two rows of onions, red in the front, white in the back. These are winter storage onions. I've been having a really hard time with the critters eating onions, and I'm not sure what exactly is eating it. I didn't think rabbits ate anything in the alum family, but something is going through right down the row and eating it. I did see a red squirrel out here this morning, so maybe it's a red squirrel. I'm still working, trying to figure out what is eating my plants. In front of our barn garden, we went ahead and just took our own compost. So every year, instead of when this was just grass, several years ago, all we have done is built up compost. So every spring we put in more and more compost. These are our vine crops here. So I have this section here, our spaghetti squash. Then I have some sweet dumplings, little squashes. These are pepitas more acorn squash and then back here i have some zucchinianos and these are just going to grow and run 
right out into the grass here and that's fine we do it every year and this works really well for keeping those vine crops out of the main garden but we still get to have them back to that lettuce that i absolutely love this is what that variety is and it's like a small head variety so this is starting to head up it's not an iceberg but it's just a really nice head lettuce and it's been doing great back here so I purchased this bug netting. You'll probably notice my other videos from past years, I've never used bug netting. This year, I decided to purchase bug netting to help with the animals. So if you can see in there, I have two rows of onions, more lettuce, and I have Brussels sprouts in the back. I still need to tidy this up. But for now, this seems to be working, keeping the bugs out of here. But back here, I have carrots intermingled with dill but something has dibbled off a bunch of the tops and the carrots. Notice they haven't touched it where the dill is, but they eat it where the dill isn't. So again, not sure if I should cover these with row covers like I did over here, or if I should just keep trying to fight the critters. I'm not sure, I've gotta figure that out. Back here is the sad state of my leeks, and I don't know if you guys can even see them, but. This is a whole row of leeks just nibbled right off and I have another row right back here. I'm not sure if they're going to survive or not. I don't know. Critters. That's life of gardeners. Comfrey over here. Great compost. Green manure. That's why I always grow it. Excellent pollinator. It's flowering right now. And I actually have a couple more around here in the garden. Horseradish. The tops got replanted this spring. The taller leaves are the second year of growing that. So this will be harvested next season, 2023. And then we'll just keep rotating our horseradish crop. Walking onions, also known as Egyptian onions. These are for using right now. You can see they're just starting to set the bulb tops. And if you've never had walking onions or Egyptian onions, these will actually fall right over onto the ground and then they'll start root and then you'll have tons of onions all over the place. The garlic has been doing really well this year and I just noticed that it's starting to get some scapes so in another week or so I'll be pulling those off. But two rows of garlic, I think it was about 120 plants if I remember what I put in in the fall. And then online I read that eggplant Actually, peppers do really well, all next to eggplant. So I have two different varieties, one variety here, and then another variety here of eggplant, and we'll just see, see how it does. It does have, if you guys have ever had eggplant, and notice it had these little holes, these are actually flea beetles. We've been having rain, so I can't treat them yet, but diatomaceous earth works really well on combating those beetles. I'll have to go ahead and put that on as soon as the rain stops. In fact, let me see if I can find one of these beetles for you. Let's see, nope. I don't know if you can see those little black things. Come on camera. But those are flea beetles and that's what's doing the damage on those plants. So I'll just shake diatomaceous earth on them and then that should control the spread of those little beetles. Okay, bean teepees. I did a whole video on how I make them, just using what's in my yard. They work really well. The beans are already starting to go up them. And I have six teepees this year. You can just see how the beans are starting to get the vines to go up. These are pole beans. The variety that I use every year is called rattlesnake. I originally started out with Baker Creek, no. I originally started out with territorial seeds and then last year I wasn't able to get them so I ended up getting pine tree, pine cone, pine tree seed company and got their, my rattlesnake beans and then these here are ones that I actually saved from last year. They germinated really, really well. So I have a lot of bean teepees here which is a new location for me trying to rotate things up and then a large area of cucumbers. In the past years, we've had really bad success with cucumbers, so we're really hoping for a good crop. I used many different varieties in here, so obviously not keeping any of these seeds for next year, but I have picklers, to slicers, to gherkins, all different varieties. We'll see what comes up. 
Back here, a row of peas. This was actually just to get rid of some of the seeds that I had. I don't usually grow peas, but I wanted to use those up. And then over here again, you can see I have more of this bug cloth. This stuff is good stuff. I will put what I'm using down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Little pricey, but it's protecting my crops. So I had old rabbit ears there, take off that Brussels sprouts there. And it was again, working on these onions. So I went ahead and covered it up and the plants do so much better when they're covered. But again, we have a, the onion, the lettuce, Brussels sprouts, and the uh, cabbage selection here. It seems to be doing really well. Again, companion planting. And then I have one row in the back of spinach and then carrots that I planted this morning. I think one of my favorite things to do every year is to film these monthly update videos because I love to see how the growth changes. And I love looking back to see where I was last year versus this year and am I ahead, am I behind, and it's just so enlightening. This year, for those of you who are new here, I am keeping a detailed gardening journal of what I'm using, what works, what doesn't work, what infestations we've had, and we're gonna see if I can pinpoint certain things that seem to work better so I can have better success every year as a gardener. Last year, we only had 700 and some on pounds of produce out of our garden, where the year before we had over a thousand. So this year, my goal is to well surpass that thousand pound mark. I don't know if we'll make it, but that's my hope. And I think the garden journal is gonna be a really important part of that to being successful. So those two gardens that you saw are by our house. We are borrowing land from our neighbor and we have three more gardens back here. You can see there's one here, there's another one right there, and then we have the orange garden. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's in all of those gardens. This garden by far gets the most sunshine which is the best for tomatoes because this is a new plot. We, oh, we started this last year and it didn't get, we only had one tiny bit of tomatoes. We do have one problem with this garden and that is the fact that we have a black walnut tree here and there's nothing I can do about that. But black walnuts are actually toxic to the nightshade family. So tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers, potatoes are not happy when their roots touch. Now, I've been told that the roots only go to the edge of the canopy of the tree. So I think these tomatoes should be fine because they're not closest to the fence where the trees are and the canopy is right over it. We will find out, this may not work. But back here I have five, six more plots of tomatoes. Again, different varieties. And then I still have two empty spaces right here. I think we're gonna be putting some jalapeno peppers back here once they get big enough. But Art wanted to try something new, so we have watermelon. I didn't think the seeds were any good. And if you look, there are a lot of seeds in here. So we're gonna have a lot of watermelons. I have a zucchini here and then weeds. <laughs> There's celery in there that's supposed to get weeded. I have celery. I have a row of weight in the back here of dill that I planted. Again, companion planting, hoping to deter pests. And then more pea seeds that I had, and they're just going to go up that fence there. You can see the celery right there, and this is actually something new that I've never grown, so I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it may work. It may not work. And then in this plot here, again, you're gonna see a lot of this companion planting this year. There's something new I'm trying. Brussels sprouts mixed with onions and then Swiss chard right there in the front. Now I mentioned about the nightshades and that tray and potatoes. You're gonna notice that I have potatoes that I planted, but these are above ground. So these should not interfere at all with the uh, the roots at all in that plant. We went ahead and just took some old broken garbage cans, broke off, cut off the bottoms, filled these with compost and threw in some grocery store grown potatoes that are just sprouting like crazy. They were past eat, eating ability. You can see they're just starting to come up. So we have eight 
trash cans here and we will just fill these up oh look at that mary we're going to fill these right up throughout the summer and they'll be full and at the end of the year hopefully there'll be lots of potatoes on the other end here i have put our squashes so i you can see there's some squash plants here i put nasturtiums because nasturtiums are good trap crops i have some blue pumpkin squash here i don't remember the name of them but they have done very well so those are coming up more nasturtiums here and then more squash here again this was to use up some of my old seeds but i bought very few seeds this year that's my baby I had, we had a baby this earlier this year so everything's a little bit behind just because we had a baby and I could not have done everything that you see without him he mm -hmm. did a whole ton of this that being said the blueberry garden that's what we call this one well it still needs some help if you guys remember last year this was entirely garden space we haven't finished this one. This one still needs to be weeded and prepped and ready to be planted. Art did do two sections. These are volunteer kale from the seeds that I threw out because I thought they were no good and I put them in the compost and look what happened. They spread everywhere. So we re-transplanted them into here and then up here we have two rows of potatoes, Art, I think yes. you said. Yeah, we found some more potatoes after you did the other ones. So I just said, let's plant those in one of these sections with all the weeds. So. <laughs> and then we have extra dirt here. These were bean teepees from last year. Again, we have not gotten this cleaned out. This is still on our to-do list. Lots and lots of blackberries though. And I'm hoping for a really, really good crop. And this is known as our orange garden. This one we never really got going last year. We got it started late and nothing really happened with it. So this is a different style of gardening for me. We just did, yes, weeds, we need to weed. We did long rows. So we have a mixture of cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. All of the lettuce that you see is actually volunteers, again, from the compost. I don't know why they all came up, but there they are. We, again, we have more kale. Kale, kale, kale. I've got to find a good recipe for kale chips. And then here at the end, I put in old beet seeds and I didn't know if they would come up but they most certainly did and they are thriving back here this seems to be a very happy place for beets so we may end up planting more beets later on because they did really really well so there you have it all five of our gardens it'll be very interesting to see how these all grow over the next couple months but if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and do that you can watch these videos try to post them at the beginning of each month so you can see the growth and if you want to see last year and past years videos on my garden tours those will all be down in the description below i hope you are having a fabulous day wonderful gardening year and i'll see you for our next video bye